where the Cowboys drafted tackle Tyler Guyton at 29 out of Oklahoma. Micah Parsons is on a live stream with Bleacher Report because, of course, he was. And here was his reaction, bro. Offensive tackle from Oklahoma, Tyler Guyton is the pick for the Dallas Cowboys. Not one of the players listed by our own Micah Parsons. I'm not mad at the pick. I think Guyton was like my fourth guy. I like the pick. It's not a bad pick. We picked up Def. We needed O-line help, and we went and got him in the first round. Okay, Brew, your reaction <laughs> to defensive leader Micah Parsons? I, I mean, he, he clearly didn't show any excitement. Now, he had given his three guys. He was hoping to get one of them. Yeah. And he said Guyton was fourth, so that was a convenient yeah. thing to say. But <laughs> I, I'll say this. I, I like the pick, and I'm not going to question the Cowboys with their offensive linemen. There's a lot to not like about the Cowboys and the way they do business. They know how to pick offensive linemen. That's true. Zach Martin, Tyron Smith, Tyler Smith. Like, so uh, this guy's got, he's humongous. He's six, what is he, six, eight, 320. Yep. He's athletic. You know, he's a little bit raw, but they obviously know how to train offensive linemen too. So I think it's a good pick. Micah, I don't know what his draft process was, like how much he actually sure studied the guy. <laughs> There you go. He probably didn't. I mean, I'm guessing he didn't go in depth about these guys. I think it's a good pick. Man, I'm Gio's giving. Angry. I'm gonna give him a grade. Okay. I'm gonna give Ooh. him a B. Oh, and I think right. that might even be a little low. I'm so, gonna give him a B. I think this kid is probably gonna be good. Yeah, I think nothing helps team chemistry like insulting the owner's pick and <laughs> the first round draft pick <laughs> on on TV. I mean, that's always a good process. He yeah, I, I he should follow up on his podcast. <laughs> I, I thought this was a. I thought this was a great decision by Dallas. I said yesterday that they should trade back, especially if you have a, a group of players that you like, and they had those three glaring needs with center, left tackle, and running back. Now they pick up a third-round draft pick, and it's a high third-rounder that Detroit had gotten from Minnesota. So you could, with two threes, you could potentially trade up again in the second round and, and fill so both which, those needs. So I, I, I really like the, like the right. process that they went through. So to be fair, on the, my feeling on this specific pick, Brew's right. They've earned the benefit of the doubt when it comes to drafting, particularly offensive linemen. Now, as the owner of America's second most accurate mock draft, I should mention <laughs> that of the, there were four players that went in the first round that I didn't think were going to. He was one of them. So that and the guy that I thought the Cowboys should draft, the guy who played tackle, which is going to be a center in the NFL, Barton. Graham Barton from Duke, went two picks after where they were originally going to be drafting. So that part was a little curious to me. But you're right, Brew, that they know how to scout offensive linemen. But you're also right in that a lot of the problems with the Cowboys have to do with Jerry Jones' need for attention. Because I'm going to show you something, Coach, because you. you're, you're also right. They need a running back. And the best running back on everyone's board, it seems, is Jonathan Brooks. He's one of the only, he's one of two guys expected to be a second-round caliber player. He and Corum from Michigan. Jerry, last night on television in front of the media, said this. <laughs> he's just outstanding. And um, he's a great football player. We got him high, high, high. And uh, he's a good player. Show him the board. Well, I got it in here. <laughs> so I wouldn't have done that. So they're drafting at 56. For instance, Tampa, which has been trying to find a reliable running game since Brady got there, is drafting at 57. If I now am Tampa or one of the teams drafting ahead of them that's like, right. oh, maybe this guy will be around right. later, like Philly, your rival, which has two picks, two picks right before you, and I know Philly addressed right, address the running back situation, but still, like, why are you telling the world when you're – it'd be one thing if you're picking at 33. Right. If you're thinking, you're like, you know, yeah. we know what we're doing there. It's fine. Sure. They have, they have to get through 22 other teams – or 23 other teams' picks – before they get the opportunity to take their guy, I think that's a mistake. I think I think telling the world how much you love a player who you are yet to draft and you need two dozen teams to pass on is probably a mistake. Okay, so there's a couple things there. I Just to real fast, obviously I agree with what Nick is saying with regards to that, and Jerry Jones has done this now multiple times. And so, yeah, I, I think that's just chalk that up to old people doing old people things. But that will cast aside. In terms of Micah Parsons' um, response, 
I think it's awful. I think it's terrible. And Micah is supposed to be the leader, a leader of the Cowboys. He's supposed to be a face of the Dallas Cowboys. Um, you know, he's younger. He's got his podcast, so he speaks to that aspect, to that side of the fan base. Um, you know, he's more connected in that regard than, say, even a Dak Prescott, who is obviously the quarterback. And you can see he's upset. He gives some sort of like generic lukewarm response. The fact that he even has a board in general where he's saying these are the picks that I want, I think is absurd because you're setting it. You're setting now the players up who get drafted there to now already feel like they're not wanted to a degree. Like if you're Jerry Jones, I don't know why, how you're even like, okay with this or even remotely allowing this to happen. Or if you're the, even Mike McCarthy, like I just, I would be beside myself in that regard. And the fact that he can't, you know, cause he went on a whole rant for those of you who maybe didn't see about who the Eagles got. And he was just like, I can't believe the Eagles got this guy, the cornerback. How did they do that? They get so lucky. I mean, he went on a whole rant. I think he said, I'm, I think the quote was, I'm absolutely disgusted, you know, because he was so upset. Bring that same passion, but the positive passion about who the Cowboys draft. Say, I can't wait. This is so awesome. You know, this is an upgrade. They're going to protect Dak now, blah, 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 blah. Like, just even if you don't believe it, you say it. That's what a leader does. A leader doesn't always speak from the heart or speak the truth. A leader knows when to conceal the truth and say what needs to be said. And so if you want to say, oh, I like Mike, he's being honest. Okay, that's fine. But then he's not a leader. And in fact, he's actually a detriment. Because I bet you there's lots of things that Patrick Mahomes would like to say. I bet you Patrick Mahomes would love to come out and say, Rasheed Rice is a moron and an idiot, and a fool, and a clown for doing what he did. But uh, he's, he's not coming out and saying that. I don't think so, no. I know Patrick Mahomes believes that the whole thing with Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift was a distraction, because Patrick Mahomes is all about the business. And Patrick Mahomes is Kobe Bryant, and Travis Kelsey is Shaquille O'Neal. Wants to be in the, you know, wants to rap and be in, in, in movies, and, you know, and all that type of stuff. And believe me, Patrick Mahomes can say, you know, is not happy about that. He wants to just focus on football. But when you ask him, he just goes, oh, hey, man, it's great. Happy to see him happy. That's not what he actually feels. He wants to focus on football. Patrick Mahomes is serious. Patrick Mahomes has a goal and aspirations to be the GOAT, the GOAT to win six, seven, eight, nine, ten Super Bowls. He doesn't care about Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey dating. He wants Travis to be focused. But yet, he doesn't say that out loud. So, you got to know when to tell the truth and when to say what needs to be said. Sometimes you need to tell the truth in certain moments. And sometimes you don't. And Micah has no idea how to lead in that regard because he's immature. He's had a lot of success, very young. And he's with the Dallas Cowboys that have a very fascinating culture to me. On one side, it seems like you can do whatever the heck you want. And on the other side, they talk about how there's immense pressure to win right now. And it becomes very difficult to perform, especially come time playoffs. I don't know how true that is. But it just seems absurd. I mean, I would be livid if I was a player. in the You know, if I was Dak Prescott. You know, if, if I was just a... a an average player on the Dallas Cowboys who, you know, gets his, you know, gets his time, but obviously not a star like Micah or Dak. If I was a GM, if I was the owner, if I was, you know, any, anyone, I would just be like, Micah, what are you doing? First of all, get these names off the board. If you want to do the podcast or Bleacher Report, whatever, that's fine. Build your brand, get your money, do whatever. But just be supportive of whatever the heck the Dallas Cowboys are doing. You represent the Dallas Cowboys. So they got this guy, this off- offensive tackle, be like, yes, I am pumped. I am excited. I saw some tape on him. He is a beast. He is a monster. Look at this guy. He's 6'9", 200, whatever, 320 pounds. This is great. I am excited. Our offense is going to be legit. I mean, just say it. Doesn't, it doesn't, none of it even has to be true. It doesn't even have to be accurate. It doesn't even matter. Just say the positive. Bring the passion. And if you're going to be lukewarm, well, then be lukewarm for everything else then. 
because he brought so much energy for the whole thing about who the Eagles picked. And he's done this multiple years now. I mean, now you're like, you're, you got to be thinking like this, this guy, it's like that meme where you're holding hands with like your, that girl. And then the guy's like looking back at another girl. I mean, that's what Micah Parsons keeps, keeps doing. So I don't know how you could be happy about that. That just is not, you know, man, GD talked about how, you know, that's not good from like an ownership standpoint, but I also just think from inside a locker room, you know, it's just like, how does that guy feel, you know, Guyton, how does he feel that he's now stepping into that locker room knowing that one of the, not one of the loudest voice in that locker room, Michael Parkinson's is like, yeah, wasn't one of my top guys I wanted, but like, you know, he was fourth. How is he going to feel? Not good. Not good. But those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. Um, what do you think about what the Dallas Cowboys did? And what do you think about Micah Parsons' response to it in general? Um, let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here. And I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to. Something that we're really excited to be part of. And I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. As it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much. And see you next time.